Hi guys, today we're going to look at how to get started with game development. Not that long ago, you would have needed to be an experienced programmer if you wanted to create your own video game. Now there are lots of free tools and learning resources that make game development much more accessible. One of the most important aspects of game development is the game engine. This is the framework on which a game is built, and historically this is the first thing that would need to be developed. While some game studios still develop their own, many now make use of third-party game engines such as Unreal or Unity. Unity is a great choice for beginners as it's free to use, has a reasonably gentle learning curve and has a strong developer community. Today we'll take a look at some of its capabilities and see how to get started on your game development journey. First we need to download Unity, so we'll head over to the website at www.unity.com. While we're here we can have a look at some of the projects developed using Unity. There are some really successful games in this list so you'll be in good company. Let's go back to the top and click Get Started. We'll choose the individual personal plan. Now we'll just follow the prompts to install Unity Hub. Unity Hub is a really useful application that allows us to access all our projects and all the versions of Unity installed on our machine. Before creating anything, we'll need to obtain a free license. To do so, we click on Manual Activation and save the license request to our machine. We'll then be taken back to the Unity website where we'll need to create an account. Once we've done this, we select the license request file that we just saved. Then we'll just follow the remaining prompts to obtain the license file. Back in Unity Hub, we can now click Next and select the license file. We now have Unity Hub and a license, but we haven't actually installed a version of Unity yet. To do so, we click on the Installs tab and click the Add link. We'll select the latest version and follow the installation prompts, accepting all the default options. Once the installation completes, it will take a while, we can go to the Projects tab and click the New button. We'll create a new 3D project and name it Getting Started. Now we have a new project. The first thing we'll look at is the hierarchy panel on the left hand side. This displays a list of all the objects that are currently in our scene. At the moment there is a camera and a directional light. We can also add objects to our scene from here. Let's add a cube by clicking the plus button and selecting 3D object cube. A cube has now appeared in the scene view. We can navigate around to get a better view using our mouse. Holding down the middle mouse button allows us to move the view. If you don't have a middle mouse button, you can hold down Ctrl, Alt and the left mouse button and drag. The mouse wheel lets us zoom in and out. If you don't have a mouse wheel, you can hold down Alt and the right mouse button and drag. To change the rotation of the view, we hold the right mouse button and drag. We can orbit around the item by holding down Alt and the left mouse button. We can also centre our view on the cube if we double click on it in the hierarchy. Next we'll look at how we can move and manipulate objects. If we click on the Move tool, we can now click and drag on the coloured arrows to move the cube around the scene. If we then click on the Rotate tool, we can click and drag on the coloured circles to rotate the cube.
If we click on the Scale tool, we can click and drag on the coloured cubes to resize the object. We can also make these changes through the Inspector panel by changing the transform values. We'll set the cube back to how it was initially by clicking on these three dots and then on Reset. Let's have a look at what our game currently looks like through the eyes of the camera by clicking on the Game tab. If we want to change the view of our game, we can simply move the camera. We'll return to the scene view and double click on the main camera to focus on it. If we change the position and rotation of the camera, we can see the camera preview change. Another way we can set the camera is to navigate around the scene view until we get a good view of the cube. Then, with the camera selected in the hierarchy panel, we'll select Game Object, Align with View, and the camera will be aligned to the view. When we're in the Game view, we can see the background that will be used in our game. This is currently set to Unity's default skybox, which has grey on the bottom half and a blue gradient at the top to represent the sky. This doesn't really fit with our current scene, so with the camera selected, we'll change the clear flags value to solid colour. We can then click here to change the background to any colour we like. Let's make the scene a bit more interesting by adding a plane, which is essentially a flat surface. We can ensure the plane has no transformations applied by clicking on these three dots and then on Reset. We'll position the cube on top of the plane by selecting it and setting the Y position to 0.5. Next we'll add a bit of colour. To do this we need to create some materials for our game objects. We'll right click in the project panel and select Create Material. We'll name this material Floor. There are lots of settings that will change the appearance of a material, but for now we'll just set the colour by clicking on this box next to Albedo, and we'll choose a green colour for the floor. We can now drag the material onto the plane to assign it and make the floor green. We'll add another material and name it Block. And we'll set the albedo colour for this one to yellow. We'll drag this onto the cube to assign it. A huge factor on the appearance of a game is the lighting. To improve the lighting in our scene we'll go to Window, Rendering, Lighting Settings. We're not going to dig too deep into these options for the moment, but we'll click on the Generate checkbox to have Unity regenerate the lighting. By default, the Auto Generate Lighting checkbox is turned off, as the process can take a long time for complex scenes. As our scene is quite simple, we can turn this on so that the lighting is regenerated every time we make a change. Now let's look at the directional light in our scene. This can be used to simulate the light from the sun. If we click on the directional light and then increase and decrease the intensity, we can see how it affects the brightness of the scene. If we now change the rotation of the light, we can see how it affects the brightness and the shadows. We can use this to simulate different times of the day when the sun is higher or lower in the sky. Another useful feature is the ability to duplicate game objects. We'll create a copy of our cube by right-clicking and selecting Duplicate. We'll duplicate again to give us three cubes in total. We'll then reposition the first new cube by setting the position to minus 0.5 on the x-axis and 2 on the y-axis, and we'll set the rotation to 70 on the z-axis. We'll set the position of the other new cube to 3.5 on the y-axis and the rotation to minus 3 on the x-axis and 21 on the z-axis. Next we'll add a sphere to the scene. 
we'll set the position of this to be 5 on the y-axis. We'll set the colour of the sphere to be the same as the cubes by dragging the block material from the project panel. Now that we've got a few more items in the scene, we need to reposition the camera again so that they're all in view. We can do that by positioning the scene view so that we can see everything. Then we'll select the camera and select Game Object Align with View. If we now switch to the Game View and press the Play button to start the game, nothing happens. The cubes and sphere remain suspended in the air. They are not obeying the laws of physics as we haven't told Unity they should be included in the physics system. Let's look at how to fix this. We'll click the play button again to stop the game. Then we'll select the sphere and click add components. If we search for rigid body and select it, this will add the sphere to Unity's physics system. If we press the play button again, we can see the ball now falls and rolls off the cube and plane. Finally, Let's add the cubes to the physics system as well. We'll stop the game again, then hold down the control key and select all the cubes in the hierarchy panel. With them all selected, we'll click add component and add a rigid body. If we press play again, we can see that all the objects now fall and interact with each other as you would expect. Okay, that's all we're gonna cover in this introductory tutorial. Hopefully it's given you a good insight into what Unity can do and how it can accelerate your game development. This has only scratched the surface and in future we'll dig much deeper into its features. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks guys.